Tonight, two legends of L.A. Mexican cuisine are going to face off to find out who is the best, Ricardo Diaz or Gilberto Cetina Jr. It's a four-way Mexican standoff. The emperor of East L.A. and owner of Bizarra Capital, Ricardo Diaz, and his compadre, Tony Alcazar. One, two, three. And go with yours. Train their culinary guns and the Mayan influences of the Yucatan-born owner of Chichen Itza, Gilberto Cetina Jr., and his sous chef, hermano, Daniel Elkins. Which team will be left standing when the smoke clears? That's up to the judges. Food editor Krista Simmons. That's the stuff dreams are made of. And chef Brendan Collins. I'm a bit of an aficionado on awful. Pistoleros. Ready. Aim. Fuego. I feel violated. <laughs> I'm Chef Elon Hall, and the Gorbals is my restaurant. For years, I've been hosting competitions between chefs, turning my kitchen into an after-hours war zone. Tonight, two chefs go head-to-head -head with one hour on the clock to turn secret ingredients into incredible dishes. The prize, yeah. bragging rights. We've got some incredible chefs that are going to fight it out in my kitchen tonight. First, tear the roof off for Gilberto Cetina. I'm from the Yucatan. I've been cooking here for 10 years. Los Angeles is the best place to eat Mexican food outside of Mexico right now. Alberto's restaurant, Chichen Itza, made this year's LA Times list of best Mexican restaurants in Los Angeles. Chef, you've brought someone with you. Who's this? Today I brought one of the best cooks that I know from Savoir Catering here in Los Angeles, Daniel Elkin. All right, now, Gilberto's competitor, everybody please, break my eardrums for Ricardo Diaz. Los Angeles Magazine named me East L.A. Emperor because I've been expanding Mexican food and bringing in more regional dishes that people haven't been aware of. So we're going to do it. Two of Ricardo's restaurants, Guisados and Bizarra Capital, are on that same L.A. Times best of list. All right, now, Chef, you as well brought someone with you. Who did you bring with you? Yeah, I brought my great friend and uh, fantastic chef from Whittier in the Bottle Room, Tony Alcazar. Everybody, please. Now, there's one other thing we got to do, and that's look at the ingredients. First, cactus. These chefs would really have to understand how to utilize a cactus. A lot of people like to like to cook it first, just because it gets rid of some of that slime and it makes it easier to work with. Second ingredient for tonight, gooseberries. Gooseberries, beautifully paired with sweet and savory dishes on their own, maybe roasted, blistered, open grilled. I'd really like to see them in a dessert. We're missing one thing. <laughs> Liver. Calf's liver. It's real fresh. Challenges. Overcooking calf liver, it'll intensify that irony flavor. Undercooking calf's liver doesn't really work well. So, perfect medium, best way to go. Now, we're not big on rules. We've got a couple things you gotta follow. You have one hour. You have to use all these ingredients. And you have to make at least two dishes. Yeah, they got two guys each. Make them make three dishes. Just saying. I mean, he's got a point. He's got a point. So, like I said, you guys have one hour. You have to use all three of these ingredients, and you have to make at least three dishes. Oh, yeah. Stop this Ricardo's not gonna be tough at all to beat. I've been at his place, and you know, I think he could use a little tiny two-dollar cleaver. When we saw the ingredients, uh, 
I was inspired by the cactus, what we call nopales. Uh, very comfortable with it. It's a staple in Mexico. Give me a countdown from five. What's going to win the competition for us tonight? Talent, technique, working as a team. The bread pudding will be our, uh, our finale. Get that in the oven as soon as I can, because it needs to be cooked the longest. I did nice little cubes and put them individually into cast iron skillets. And we did a custard with brown sugar. Right, that's the custard. It's about to hit the uh, bread. I just put the uh, bread puddings in the oven, and they'll be ready in about 15 minutes. So, what is the monkey wrench out of all these ingredients. I'm a bit of an aficionado on offal. You know, I've been working with it for years and I really know how to cook it. I know, I've been in your restaurant, it's awful. I know, <laughs> and I know, I know, I know how to prepare cast liver correctly. Right. And if you don't peel that right, if you don't sl slice it at the right angle, it's going to be something that's really not delicious. So for my first dish, I made a uh, cactus hat panucho. Panucho is a uh, traditional Yucatan handmade tortilla filled with uh, black bean puree. Then it's uh, fried up, used as a uh, vessel for topping. You have to be very careful when you're making the tortilla to get as much of the surface of the, of the tortilla pressed down against the griddle. And then it generates steam in the portion that you did not press down on. And that steam should build up and you know make it puff up like a balloon. tortilla to pop up so I can put black beans inside. No good. This one's no good. No good. I had a little bit of a problem. It was actually sticking to the griddle. When things are going wrong, what's going through your mind is I just have to figure out a way to fix it. Are we in the weeds? I am in the weeds. I'm, I'm having problems. so much going on. Tony, they're making some sort of bread pudding and cast iron pans. Gilberto is making fresh tortilla that he's pressing. No good. Okay, dude, I'm gonna, I, I, gotta, I gotta do it like, I gotta do it like that. Two. I was really not happy that it took me so much time to make a panucho because, uh, you know, I knew it was eating up the uh, time that we had to do other things. Our first dish was the ensalada nopal, the cactus paddle. I'm cleaning those nopales, make sure nothing gets stuck in uh, the judges' throats. We blanched it, which means to boil quickly in salted water. The reason we blanch the cactus is to make sure we take any bitterness out of the cactus. How are we looking? Good. So after blanching, we put it on the griddle so that we can get kind of a smoky charcoal effect. We're going to do a carpaccio of these tomatoes. So we either go with uh, your vinaigrette or my vinaigrette. One, two, three. Cilantro, a little bit of time, put the first dish up. Yeah. What do you guys got working? Uh, we got the nopales, we kind of seared them to get like a, like a grilled effect as, as if we're in the rancho in Mexico. Want a little spice? We want a little spice. A little no? spice. Yeah. Uh, this is serrano, one of my favorites. That doesn't taste pasty like jalapeno does. Yes, okay, so fresco, just a little bit of honey, give it a little sweetness, and it picks up the musky flavors of nopal. We got one. We got a plate coming out. Dropping off the first plate felt, felt fantastic because it was actually like first blood. Okay, so uh, we have a classic nopal salad, queso fresco that we had in your kitchen, some heirloom tomatoes, and a thyme vinaigrette. Thank you very much. Great. I almost wish that's all we got, that with the cheese and the thyme. Yeah. But it's tasty. No, it's tasty, yeah. Yeah. I don't hear you guys. So right now I'm frying up my panuchos. We'll do a uh, nopal salad on top of this. You don't want any of those flavors in your None. No. After the uh, cactus bag, they've been clean. I sliced them and blanched them. Next, I made a salad to go on top of the panucho, which was heirloom tomatoes. There was a roasted chile poblano in there. There was also a sauteed red onion, salt, olive oil, and lime juice. We got a plate coming. Coming out. Coming through. 
This is a panucho. It's a handmade tortilla. It's filled with a black bean puree. It's flavored with a little bit of habanero. And then on top, we have a uh, salad of nopal, sauteed onions, heirloom tomatoes, slice of avocado. Enjoy. 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Is so good. I love the idea of stuffing it with black beans. It almost sold. That's pretty good, though. Yeah. So our second dish was calf's liver. Milk is uh, one of the classic tenderizers for calf's liver. While the calf's liver was marinating, we also sliced a couple of kumquats. We're adding sweet component to the liver because everything else on the dish is super savory. Uh, right now, we're uh, going to cut the onions so that we can start sauteing them. I'm going to start searing our liver. Salsita. That's our salsa de chile morita. They're chilies that have been smoked and dried in the sun, kind of like the original chipotle in Mexico. There goes a the blender. We have garlic in there. Uh, we have onions. All right, let's go. You got ready with the sauce? Yeah. Are we going to start plating? These are our sweet and sour onions. You guys eat chile, right? Give them more. Looks like it's a little bit mealy, but that uh, the, the salsa is on par. It's really nice with the caramelized onions. It actually, for me, it's not too overdone, and I love the sweet heat. That sauce is just banging. I mean, that makes it. That pulls it all together. Daniel, what are you doing? My dish is going to be a pasta, and I'm going to use that calf liver. I would have shot this piece off, left that piece, and then that on my top. That one's got way more blood vessels in it, right? It's got all the ventricles in there, all the veins. This bit is nice. First thing I did was I took all the uh, ingredients from the pasta in the mixer, let that work, so it would have time, a little time to rest. I cooked up the onions with a little bacon fat. The key to breaking up calf liver is taking a small bit of time. This time I'm going to cook with those onions that are melting down the bacon. Cut that up and uh, made the filling for the pasta. Now I'm working on the actual pasta. It's going to be an annulotti. Tried to roll out my pasta, which wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Under the pressure, I was trying to roll out my pasta, and I was rolling it out way too thin to start off with, and it was kind of ripping, and I was having a lot of problems with it. Oh, boy. Trying to make pasta in an hour is not the way we usually do it. Every second counts. Now I'm scared. Oh. Team Ricardo Diaz and Tony Alcazar have been in sync and played two dishes for the judges. We'll go with yours, Sam. I've been a great one. Meanwhile... Chef Gilberto Satina has finished one dish. You got a plate coming. While Chef Daniel Elkins refocuses on his pasta. Yeah, no, it's a nightmare over here. On Gilberto's side, you have a pasta meal, which I think is crazy to be making pasta by hand in an hour. So you usually need some time to rest your dough. As you can see, it's not perfect, but I'm going to fold it over, so that's going to kind of be like median. It's kind of a cheap. I wanted to do it faster, but it didn't happen. It's fine. This is the uh, cap liver. So now I'm going to put this in a pastry bag so I can type it in my pasta. I brought some chicken stock up to the boil. I threw in some sage and some cold butter. Meanwhile, I took some of that sous vide bacon, crisped it up for a little texture, put my pasta into the emulsion so it absorbs some of that sage flavor. And then I took that bacon and threw it on top. There's another plate on the way out. Hello, chefs. I made an I made it with a uh, calf liver. I had a sage emulsion, and I had some uh, 72 hour sous vide bacon that I just crisped up for a little texture. Great. Right. Thank you. needs to be rolled a little bit thicker because the pasta texture is part of what makes an angulati. That was a poor dish. The pasta was poorly executed before the liver was overcooked. That was miserable. Tell me how you really feel. I feel violated. <laughs> guys, how much time do we have? 17 minutes. All right, bread pudding's out of the oven. Our third dish was a brioche bread pudding. We made a gooseberry caramel. We put a little slice of habanero, then you pull it out. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We finished it with a couple of slices of habanero chilies to just kind of spice it up just a little bit. I'm going to pull out this habanero. 
when it all came together, we just served it with a little scoop of vanilla ice cream that Elan had in the kitchen. Another plate is coming out. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Coming over. Grab it. Oh, 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 oh,
We came, we cooked, we kicked ass.